Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be looking at how to create presentation sections in Revit. These are some examples of how to create a beautiful presentation sections in Revit. The first one to do is to cut sections. We'll go to the section icon at the top of the screen, click on it. You click the start point and then click the end point and Revit automatically creates a section. So first go to the section, you can do that uh, in two ways. You can double click the head of the section icon to go to a section or you can go to the project browser, click on the section tab and select the specific section you want to go to, in this case section 2. The very first thing you want to do after creating your section is to place your view on sheet. Why is this important? Because we work with the end result in mind. In Revit, you don't want to work outside of a sheet for too long, especially when you know at the end of the day, the sheet is the place of presentation. To create a new sheet, right click on the sheets icon, select new sheet, and then click your desired sheet. To drag our sections into the sheet, on that section, we select the section, click and drag to place the view on sheet. So the first thing I want to do is to establish the scale. I'll double click on the view to make it active. I want to hide this other section line here. I'll select it, right click, hide in view by elements. The next thing I want to do is to set the scale. So I still have a, a large amount of space around my sheet. So I'm going to reduce this scale to custom and let me set it at scale one is to 75 and see how it turns out. This is fair enough. So I'm going to deactivate the view and place it properly at the center of the sheet without anything being selected on the view click on the view type 2 you can click and drag it at your prevert position so one of the things that can make your section rowdy will be the level heads in this view i've already edited mine to make it look a little bit organized but yours might not be like this so let me just show you how to edit it you select the level click on edit type and under the properties check for symbol under the symbol, note, note the specific level head noted in the view. This is M level head circle 2. So note this specific head and then cancel. Under families, come to annotation symbol and check for that specific level head. You can see it here, M level head circle 2. Right click on it, on, not on the one beneath it, but on the actual one. Right click on it and click edit. When, once you click on edit, it takes you to the edit mode of that level head. Here you can edit the name of the, the, the size of the text. The text size here is 3mm. I can change it to 2mm to make it smaller. I can also change the size text of this elevation from 2mm to 1.5mm. I can also bring them a little bit closer to each other or two of them on the same line. I place both of them on the same line because I don't want any cluster. You can also reduce the size of the icons um, you have there. Um, and this is what I'm just doing now as an example to let you know how to reduce this. Now, these two icons here are referred to as labels. So labels you can add or remove and you can do that from the create tab you see a label, you click the position you want the label in, and then you can add the icon for the label. So uh, with this screen arrow and the label appears here. So if I click this and I add uh, this icon, for example, you see the label appears here, but I don't need that. Most times what we need is the, uh, the elevation height in numbers and the elevation name in text. So after this, I load the level head back into the project and override the existing parameters. So you see they are now smaller and uh, neater. So I'll go back to the elevation, establish the extent of the level head, the levels, because I don't want them to constitute a nuisance to the work. Then the next thing I want to do is to set up my curve box. So my curve box will be, will be set according to the extent of the sheet as much as I want the elevation to go through the sheet. Now editing your curve box also, you can, especially if you want to create some effects uh, at the base of, of your section, 
the cut box mustn't always be square shape. You can adjust it to to have this kind of feel. So this is one of the uses of the cut box. You can leave it active or turn it off with this icon here, which is show crop region. So you can turn it on or turn it off with this. You also want to ensure that none of your levels extend outside of your title panel. That's very important because it keeps your work organized. You can edit the graphics of the levels by selecting on it, clicking on edit type. Under the color, you can set the color. You can also set the line style if you want another type of line style or if you want um, solid lines. The next thing I want to emphasize on is um, on furniture. You, you should try as much as you can to add one or two furniture in your section. A good website to download components is uh, beamobject.com. They allow you to download very high quality, high detailed components. So after bringing in the furniture from beam objects or from wherever you've downloaded them, sometimes some furniture may not show the details within them. You can select those kind of components and right click, override graphics in view by element or category. Uh, but for me, I'd prefer to do by element and then just increase their transparency a little bit so that you could see some of the details embedded within the furniture. So I've had the, the right shower cubicles, right wardrobe and right kitchen details placed within my scene. And the section is looking much more detailed. So the next one to add is room tags. Placing room tags and sections can be very easy if you've already done that in your floor plans uh, when preparing your presentation floor plan. Make sure your view is active if you're working on sheets. Under annotate, you click on tag all and select room tags and select the specific kind of room tag you want to use to tag all and then click on OK. And uh, all the spaces are tagged. Now it's left for you to ensure that each of the tags, uh, the positions are where you want them to be so that they don't they are not in conflict with other uh, information around on, on the view. So you can decide to raise them up the way I'm raising mine up. You may decide not to. It's uh, entirely up to you. I just want to keep mine out of uh, anything that might that might lead to conflicts or overlay or cause confusion. My tags are of good size. They are not very big and they don't interfere with, the, with any of the components. If, for example, you have not worked on your tags properly, then you might need to edit your tags. By selecting it and then clicking on Edit Family, it leads you to the family view of the tag where you can edit it. Let me say, for example, I want to make this room name red in color. I'll select the label, click on Edit Type. Under Graphics, go to Color and then change it to red. And that solves the issue of it being red. So then you load back into the project and override existing graphics and views. The next one to do is to change the graphics of our walls, floors, uh, doors and window so that they stand up. I'll start with the wall. You can select it, um, right click and override graphics and view by category. And then under cut patterns, you can set all the wall to solid fill, either foreground or background and select apply and all the walls will be in solid fill. The cut lines for the wall, you can also make them can be solid lines. The weight can be one mm so that the, the weight of the cut lines would be thin. So we do the same thing for the floor, override graphics in view by category. Cut patterns, we set it to solid fill, select apply. Uh, and the cut lines, we can set the scale to one. We have this well defined. If we need to edit or adjust anything in the door and window, it's still the same way. You can right click on it, uh, override graphics in view by category, and then we can apply either field regions to them. Or this, I did this for the cut pattern, sorry. Under the surface pattern, we can apply uh, colors to the door by using the surface pattern under the override graphics in view by category. And 
apply different color pattern to the door if we want to do that also. Same goes for the window. The next one to look at is applying materials to your section. So I'll double click. Under the visual style, we've been working on hidden line. We have other visual styles such as the shaded, the consistent colors, and the realistic. Each of these styles comes with your own specific feel to your presentation section and you are free to choose whichever one you want. But let's say you want to apply some realistic materials to your section. The best style to go for will be the realistic view. Once you're on your realistic view in your section, click on the paint tool here and go through to select the specific material. Let's say wood panel. And then when you apply the materials, you'll discover that it comes out exactly as um, wood panels. If you're in realistic view, you're going to see exactly the material you applied. But if you're not in realistic view and you still use it, you're going to just have um, a graphical representation of the material. So whichever one you choose uh, still works very fine. After applying material, the next thing will be shadows and lighting. You'll notice the tags have this white background around them. If you don't want this, this white background, you edit family, the label to, from opaque to transparent uh, for both text size. If you don't want those white background uh, behind your text. So overwrite graphics on you. So something I've not done in my section is to indicate my baseline, which is very important. So you can just draw a line, but if you want to make it clean and crisp, you can use a solid field region to just like a rectangle to draw that. So under annotate, I'll click on region, make sure that it's solid black. One trick I would suggest while working on your presentation elevation is that it's always good to have your ground line run from the beginning to the end of your sheet as it gives your building that stability of not being suspended in, in the middle of your sheet. So if you have this very solid line running from one edge of your panel to the other, it's uh, it gives that ground feel. Whether it's straight line like this or you need it to slope around, let it start from the beginning to the end of your panel. Next I want to do is to work on shadows, uh, lighting and other annotation. So let's start with shadows. Just like we worked on shadows in the floor plan, you can turn on your shadows from this icon and then you can do the settings on the graphics around the shadows from the graphic display option. Select it, click on the graphic display option, and then um, we'll do the settings here. Under lighting, we can set the intensity of the shadows, how solid we want them to be. You can also check on ambient shadows and ambient light to create that feel if you want it. If you don't want it, you can turn it off. Um, we can also reduce the intensity of the sun. So these are settings we can easily do. We can use the smooth anti-lysing to make the lines a little bit smoother. This only works under realistic. So this particular setting works under realistic. So I won't bother with this for now. Then under the background, the basic backgrounds we have in Revit. They work in connection with the lighting scheme. So for now, I'm going to just use the gradient background. Uh, that's what I prefer to use most times. So you can adjust this base if you want it to be darker for the ground area. So there are many adjustments you can make with this. There is also an option on the background to use a custom image, although I'm not going to go into that now, but it allows you to select and I'm bringing a custom image. Click on OK. We've worked on our lighting and shadows to a fair extent, and I think it's looking uh, very OK. The next thing we want to do would be to add some context around, like maybe buildings, trees, vegetation, cars, and humans. So I'm adding vegetations just like we added in the presentation floor plans. There are many things to add to make your elevation come out based on your entourage. 
But the final thing I might uh, want to do on that graphic display option is to turn on the depth queuing. De what depth queuing does is that um, it fades out some of these components we've added. So this is our presentation elevation. I'll go ahead to export, select file, click on export. I'll export as image, you can export as PDF if you want. So on that export, select image and I'm going to set this to 3000 and click on yes. So this is this is a presentation elevation we've done in Revit. If you export as realistic, you, you can also get a defined section entirely. So depending on your view style, you can export your presentation elevation, the same one with different style. So one of the advantages of having your presentation elevation in Revit is that, is that with one view, you can have various styles exported. I've just exported um, three different styles. This is one. This is the shaded colors. This is two with the finished realistic feel. And this is three with uh, mostly just black and white feel. So you can see one view, three different styles. This lesson is just introductory. It can get way more complex and way more beautiful than this. But I'm going to stop here. And I'll catch you in the next video. Please like, share, subscribe. Yes, thank you.